Hello everyone, the Panda Photographer here. And today, it's the first video of 2019. And let's talk about the Sony FE 90mm GOSS micro lens. Why you should actually pick one up for 2019 for your portraits. But remember, it's also a very versatile tool. So if I were you, shoot B-rolls with it, weddings with it, portraits with it, even landscapes with it. I even done time lapse with it. I have even done long exposures with it. So it's a great tool to have, but really talk about how much it changes the A game for portraits because I really believe that the micro 90mm micro lens of any sort, but technically we're gonna talk about the Sony FE 90mm micro lens, why it's a super perfect focal length and a secret killer for portraits. <music> What's up everyone, the Panda Photographer is back and I'm going to tell you why you may want to purchase the Sony FE 90mm micro lens for 2019 for your portraits. Or if you are a videographer or hybrid shooter and you like using your lenses in a very versatile way, trust me as a micro shooter with a micro lens that I have owned, the Tamron SP, the Sony FE 90mm and soon the IRX 150 f2.8. Now. The reason why I shoot at 2.8 for all my portraits is because I want that detail. I want that sharpness. Some people will shoot wide open, but for me, I just shoot 2.8. And I'm going to show you right now that I am sh broadcasting and showing you guys that I did shoot with the Sony FE 90mm micro lens for these images. All right. So what I do in my processing is I would do my processes in Lightroom. Once I did all the removals, all the touching up. I want to do a little bit more tweaks to my portraits and I will uh, do the editing, the rest of the editing and Nick collection. And I'm going to show you this images, this image right now with the Sony FE 90mm micro lens, how sharp it is. It's a very, very sharp lens. And why do you want to use micro lenses? Some people will prefer 85s over 90mm micro lens. But for me, micro lenses have the signature that I'm looking for, a versatile lens. I will do B-rolls with it. I will shoot landscapes with it. I've done time lapse with it. I've done weird things in the art of photography with the micro lens, trust me. It's a very versatile tool. But look how sharp. Doesn't those eyes make you wanna go out and shoot some portraits right now? It is detailed, it is sharp, it is crispy. Now, you guys may ask me, what about the autofocus? Isn't it slow? Yes, but, if you do a little bit of fine tweaking with the autofocus system in Sony, if you want a little bit faster, you can increase that. It does help, but in some cases I shoot wide, right? And I would choose autofocus and pick my subject's eye out with eye detection and it would stay snapped and stay locked on to her. Now, if I'm using flexible, expandable, flexible spot, whatever that big ass title is, I will also use the my joystick to move my my focus point to her eye or to her face. Now, most of the time, I am shooting manually, and it still have a face detection that pops up on the screen. Let me know that she's in focus, and this is the result of it. And look how sharp it is, all through her lips, her nose, her face, even her eyebrows are in focus just a slight little bit. As you can see, even her hat is in focus right here in the center here. And I just want to show you guys a before image. If I can just want to show you a before so you guys get a good idea. And then let's reset it and boom. And then I would go in light, uh, Nick Collection, touch it up. And the reason why you want to probably buy a micro lens is because it's a secret killer to portraits. Hands down. A lot of people doubt it. A lot of people don't credit it. But myself will always credit the Sony FE 90mm micro lens, the Tamron SP 90mm micro lens. And soon, let's hope that the, the IRIX 150 F2.8 is going to be an 
a third addition to my arsenal. Now, keep in mind, I don't own the FE90 anymore because back in late 2016 in New York, my studio was robbed, all my camera gear was stolen. So this is why I go back to these photos, retouch them and post them up as a finished product because I did retouch these photos recently. It was about time I have done it. But as you can see, beautiful lighting at 2.8. You can see I'm accustomed to 2.8. Now you guys are looking at the shutter speed. Why are you not shooting above your focal length? And this is a Sony. It has stabilization on this lens. It's wet to see, by the way. Yes, it's a little bit front heavy on crop sensors. Now keep in mind, on a crop sensor, the focal length changes to 135. But if you put a battery, battery uh, a grip onto your camera, it kind of balances itself out a little bit. So you may want to take advantage of that. Now, these images I'm showing you right now are just my, what's the word I'm looking for? Breathtaking, okay? Breathtaking, sharp, crispy. She gave me eye contact. Thank you, Kakisha, for the beautiful modeling in 2016. I still remember, but I just want to show you guys what I did to these photos and show you how sharp they are and detail. Actually, I retouched this photo recently. Let's go back to this one. There we go. I retouched this photo recently and I wanted to show you guys that it is beautiful. Now, I, you notice that the skin tone's color has changed a little bit because I wanted a little bit more, not so reddish on the red side of things and greenish. So you can tell in the background here that the bokeh is pretty damn smooth, but you can tell what's going on in the background. You can tell that I'm at a waterfront or a dock. Yes, I'm in Domo, Brooklyn, New York City mind you and you can tell what's back there you can see the green trees you can see the bridge right here the the support beams or the bridge you can tell that i'm at literally at the dock and we are taking beautiful pictures on the golden hour you can see a little golden hour in the background giving that nice separation and also lighting my subject as i said i use a speed light for most of these images one speed light that's all I needed. But I do want to tell you also, guys, that with this micro lens, it's versatile, as I said before in the beginning of this video. So I'm going to show you an image. Oh, there it is. That's taken on a beautiful, perfect golden hour with that 90mm micro lens. Breathtaking. Look at that silhouette, beautiful golden hour. And it's sharp, too. I'm going to show you how sharp it is. Let this log. Look how sharp that is. That was handheld through a window in Canarsie, Brooklyn in 2016. Beautiful. I would put this lens hands down on any other micro lens other than the Tamron SP 90mm, which I am truly in love with. But as I said, if I had a choice of the three lenses of choice, that which the iRigs, I'm hoping that the iRigs 150 is going to be a good, good, good lens for Sony, which is they are going to try to license it and sometime this year. Hopefully they have a Sony version of that lens. But the Tamron and the Sony FE 90mm micro lens are the best lenses to get for portraits, landscapes, weddings, doing B-rolls, doing videos. Trust me, it's just amazing. If you haven't seen my wintry, all my winter micro lenses, all my videography with the micro lens. Go check those videos out down in the descriptions below, or I leave a card here on the display so you guys can go check those videos out because the Tamron SP 90mm is something that is a contender to the Sony FP 90mm and they neck and neck. And the videography I did for that is just mind blowing. Trust me, you guys are gonna be like, wow, that's pretty insane. But with that said, everyone, go out for 2019. And buy a micro lens, buy the Sony. If you have a Sony, make sure that you invest in this lens. Now you can get it between $1,100, $1,100 or $900 used, but either way, even used is still just, just spectacular. With that said, everyone, I'm the Panda Photographer. If you want to support what I do, all you have to do is subscribe, hit that like button. If I said anything wrong, hit the down button.
But if you guys have anything I miss about this micro lens, let me know down in the comments down below. Uh, running out of time, I had to go to court for a trademark because I'm trademarking the Panda Photographer so no one can use it so I can sell merch. But anyway, if you guys want to support this channel financially, there's a PayPal donation link. As a travel photographer, it does really help me out, ladies and gentlemen. But with that said, eat, sleep, photography, and go to Sony. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.